It is that time of the day when we give you an update on how far many of the stories we've been following up for you today have advanced. Here's your lunchtime update. We've got our reporters on the ground who have been out and about bringing us the latest news on our top stories. I'm joined by Slindelo Masigane uh, in Pretoria, Heidi Jokos also in Pretoria, and Bule Lichwiti Jones in Johannesburg. Slee, uh, let me start off with you. Of course, today, uh, finding out that the um, Senzo Miwa murder trial there in Pretoria will be postponed until next month. Many postponements have happened so far, and I'm just wondering, uh, even though the judge does have a right to his sick leave, he did say that he's been ill, how are the families? Um, you know, what's their reaction to the fact that there's another delay now? Very disappointed, uh, quite frustrated as well, especially given the fact that the state didn't alert the family uh, that there was a possibility that uh, there was going to be a postponement. Uh, you would know that uh, Senzo Miwa was born and bred in uh, KwaZulu-Natal in Mlazi, so the family um, has to travel every time the court is in session when they do want to be in court. And of course, we're expecting uh, to sit for the whole week uh, in terms of uh, testimony that's being led by the state uh, for their fifth witness, Zandi Kumalo, somebody else who was in the house, and of course for the family. They say that this process um, is a way for them to try and get closure. But of course we know how slow uh, the wheels of justice turn, and it seems that this latest delay um, has certainly uh, had a negative impact for the family. Um, his uh, senzo sister, um, Nomalanga Mayua, was quite emotional after court. Um, um, you know, telling the media how the family still has an open wound um, and is really trying to get closure with this particular trial uh, to know exactly what happened to Sin. So let's take a listen. Even though a Nabanda suspects him with Bazo community, we own a spoor information about our keeper and control in Gayona exactly. The Estaban would sing Ion, Sonji, Tina, as Wunda and Joba Nishwood, Sisokalula, Tamba Manjo would see. Says some discarded a cooling and bella, but still, I eat it and at Ia Pateka, Ayanza Lai, Guna Locondus, Locus Porta, and Locus Fitala, and the boys, young King to Caesar on the day. All right, Heidi, let's come to you. Of course, the electricity minister uh, giving an update on how we're looking in terms of our energy availability in South Africa. Um, we've seen some sort of improvement. Should we be celebrating? Um, perhaps we should be celebrating uh, Masejo, but let's not get too excited because the Minister of Electricity, uh, Dr. Jose Anso making it very clear that generating units are not reliable at this stage and that... Um, Looking at the weather forecast, we could be experiencing colder temperatures in the next coming weeks, and we all know what that means. That means demand definitely goes up when um, the temperatures uh, decrease. So uh, the minister is saying that our energy availability factor is currently at just over 60 percent, which has contributed to the lower stages of load shedding that uh, we are experiencing. The minister says the main aim and goal right now is to get us to stage zero and completely eliminate rolling blackouts. But but I think what's imperative here is the fact that the Minister of Electricity meeting with counterparts of Mozambique, meeting with the Minister of Mineral Resources and Energy from Mozambique to see how Mozambique as a country can assist, the, can, assist South Africa um, in our energy crisis, even though it's very little megawatts, it's about 100 megawatts, and then possibly an additional 600 megawatts that could be brought in from Mozambique. It's, of course, an ongoing discussion. Um, I pose the question to the Minister about whether or not this is going to happen in the short term and how long this deal with Mozambique is going to be in place for, uh, given that we have been told that it's going to take some time in order for the country to uh, get uh, additional megawatts onto the grid, given what's happening with Kusile and a number of other power stations that remain unreliable. Uh, the minister says it's an engagement, it's a discussion with um, the country of Mozambique and they are trying their best to uh, make sure that they can get whatever megawatts um, so at this point will take because if you look at it, if it's going to be 600 plus 100 megawatts, it's possibly one stage low uh, of load shedding um, and, and I, I guess we'll take that. Let's listen to what uh, the Minister of Electricity had to say today uh, after today's engagement. 
will be able to get 100 megawatts immediately. Of course, that's subject to a more technical discussion. And I say technical contracting between uh, ESCOM and uh, the equivalent uh, ESCOM equivalent in Mozambique EDM. So the technical teams will sit. But what we know is that 100 megawatts is available now. And then in the next six months, there's uh, another uh, about 600 megawatts that is uh, available to South Africa. And but what we know is that for us to be able to ensure that uh, one, we end load shedding and we ensure energy security is not something that uh, you are going to achieve energy security in the next three to, to five years. And I guess it will be subject of that conversation. So I'm not just looking at a winter intervention. I think it's going to be um, much longer than that. Uh, and it will be part of that discussion. And like I said, transparency, I'll share that with the country, just the length of, uh, of, that, uh, of that agreement. And of course, as we begin to get more renewables uh, on stream, we want to get the economy back on its uh, feet. You just need additional uh, energy to underpin, if you like, the recovery efforts. Mm, today, of course, uh, the channel is focusing on the state of South Africa's rail network, and you've been out and about in Johannesburg just trying to uh, see how things look on this side of the country. Uh, what have you learned so far? You know, myself, I've learned a lot. Uh, just after we left the Johannesburg Park Station, we spoke to some of the, you know, commuters there who have now resorted to other alternative modes of transport, including e-hailing and, of course, um, the Khao train and others saying that they can no longer use some of the trains, of course, under Prasa due to how they've been uh, badly neglected and, of course, due to uh, other reasons, including safety. And you look at the... Uh, railway line, of course, are, are accommodating the Prasa uh, trains, and you, you see how badly they've been vandalized and wrecked apart. But we're also focused on Transnet, and we saw how some of the railways supporting Transnet have been, you know, badly impacted. And this has an effect on some of the valuable commodities which would then contribute to the country's economy, which includes iron, coal, and of course, other ores as well. And therefore, when this causes ba a backlog and they're delayed in transportation using the railways, system, it means that the country will be losing millions in terms of uh, money that could have been injected to the, eco the economy as well of this country. So those just some of the things I've learned today. I visited one station in Jemiston as well, in Kurleni, which Maseho has been badly vandalized. In fact, when you enter the station, you see that uh, homeless people are now living there. Um, you know, some of the copper cables have been stolen. Um, you know, the material and steel there has been, you know, wrecked apart. So it's it's just chaotic. Um, but of course, Prasa and Transnet both say that this is as a result of theft and vandalism. However, they're not just coming up with um, stories or other excuses. They're saying that they are looking into these issues and it would require a lot of money in terms of rehabilitating some of these corridors and of course, railway networks. But let's take a listen to what Prasa had to say in the morning when we had a chat with them been doing a lot of rebuilding uh, our infrastructure, rehabilitating our, our infrastructure across the country. A lot of work has gone into this. Um, I can tell you now that we have recovered about 18 of our corridors, which is a significant improvement. We are running trains um, in the Western Cape, Gauteng, KwaZulu-Natal, um, in the Eastern Cape. We've returned the services, the commuters are back, and if you were to see um, the trains that are moving now, we have a lot of um, commuters using those trains, showing the demand there is for the passenger rail services. So there's a lot of work that's gone into replacing um, that infrastructure. But in terms of the theft and vandalism, mm. there's a lot of work that has gone into it. We've had to re-strategize and re-look in terms of the infrastructure that we are putting on the railway network to make sure that it's vandal proof. For instance, we have also decreased um, the copper content on the overhead cables that power the trains. So we are in Installing also anti-theft um, and anti-vendor clips on our tracks so that they're not easily stolen um, by criminals. So there's a lot of work that that is happening. I mean, Prasa has to date. Um, uh, achieved 59% of our targets. Um, we are rebuilding, we are restoring the services, mm. the numbers are, are going up, but there's a lot of work that's going to rebuilding the railway infrastructure. Yep. All right, that was your ENCA lunchtime update from all angles with reporters Pulili Chwiti-Jones, Hadi Jokos and Slindelo Masigani. Thank you, team.